think we can go on with the uh, final modification that we want to discuss in this uh, chapter, and that's the idea of coinsurance. So with coinsurance, the insurance company is going to pay a certain proportion, alpha, of the loss, and the policyholder pays the remaining fraction. So if coinsurance is your only modification, then the kind of transformations of random variables that you're looking at is of the form y is alpha times x, where alpha is this proportion that um, the insurance company, the proportion of the loss that the insurance company is going to uh, is going to pay for, is going to compensate. And you may encounter this kind of construction in certain health insurance plans, um, perhaps not in Europe, but but in, uh, in the United States, you may also recognize it in certain types of reinsurance contracts. Huh? So this is what we call, what we refer to as co-insuring uh, the loss. So each party pays a certain fraction of the loss. Now, what we're gonna do as a kind of wrap up uh, or a kind of putting it all together in this, um, in this chapter is, what if we put all these items together? Huh? So what if we have the inflation are being present. What if we have an ordinary deductible imposed after the inflation is put into place? What if we have a policy limit U after the inflation effect is taken care of? And what if we, in the last step, have the coinsurance alpha? Yeah. So I have these, these four elements, these four types of modifications over here, but I do not have them in the right order, let's say. Yeah. So the way you should see it is, we're going to do the inflation first. So we're going to go from x to 1 plus r times x. Then we're going to impose both the ordinary deductible d and the policy limit u. And then at the very end, so in the last step, we're going to apply the coinsurance uh, factor alpha. And what is going to happen then is that you create a per loss random variable yl that can be described uh, as follows. Yeah? So we're going to think about how this construction work. Uh, how this construction works and what we can do in terms of the uh, expected value of uh, uh, this transformed random variable. So just a couple of thoughts before we dive into the derivation. So the quantities are applied in a particular order. That's what I just meant. First inflation, then policy limit and the deductible and the coinsurance as the last. The policy limit is here then well, it is u, but it means that the maximum amount payable becomes alpha times u minus d, right? And we're going to think about that. Uh, so why is that? Because we're going to pay, first of all, the part above the deductible. We're going to limit that to u, right? Um, we're going to limit it to, um, to u, and we're going to pay only part of the uh, resulting loss. So we're going to have this, this alpha, yeah? So we need to think about uh, how this construction works and what we can then do in terms of the uh, per loss random variable and the per payment uh, random variable. And you'll see that we can come up with the expected value of the YL, the expected value of the YP, and uh, so on and so forth. So I suggest we switch to the IFAT to think about this construction uh, together and to make sure that we can uh, clarify how this, how this works. Okay, so here's my uh, starting point. So first of all, I'm going to say that the per loss uh, random variable is the yl, that it can be described as follows. So I've got zero if x is below d divided by 1 plus r. I've got alpha times 1 plus r times x minus d. If we have an x that is in between uh, d divided by 1 plus r and u divided by 1 plus r. And I've got alpha times u minus d if the x is above or equal to the u divided by 1 plus r. So let's first of all try uh, to make sense of this construction. Um, so what can we uh, say? So why is this the case? Well, we look at the transformed loss y being equal to 1 plus r times x. And we um, make sure that this y is subject to the ordinary deductible 
D. Yeah. So that means so that means that if your uh, y being one plus r times x is smaller than the d, yeah, then there is no uh, then there is no payment. There is yeah. Then the loss there is no payment where the loss is equal to zero. So the loss is then equal to zero. And of course, y being less than or equal to d, that's the same as saying that the x is smaller than the d divided by 1 plus r. Yeah? So that's my first condition. Uh, it explains the first line in my specification of the yl. If the underlying loss x is below d divided by 1 plus r, there will be no payment, then the loss will be equal to 0. If we then look at a loss, that uh, stays, so this is my first line, if I then look at a loss y equal to 1 plus r times x, which is in between the d and the u, right? So what does that mean? Then I'm going to pay as an insurance company huh, the uh, loss uh, and the payment are then equal to Uh, equal to the part of this y random variable that goes above d and the insurance company is not going to pay everything. The insurance company is going to pay a part alpha of this resulting loss. Uh, so that's where the construction, that's where the second line is coming from. And if you then look at the third line, then we would be considering a y that goes above the policy limit. And if this y goes above uh, the policy limit, then what's going to happen in this construction? So then the loss and the payment. Well, this 1 plus r times x will be kept at u. We still have the ordinary deductible into place, and we still have the coinsurance uh, factor. So this is the maximum uh, loss, or it's the maximum amount, uh, the maximum covered, yeah, it's the maximum amount um, payable, maximum paid amount, yeah. So this is how you should understand uh, the type of, of, of the construction that we have over here. So we do first 1 plus r times x, then we make it subject to a deductible, the ordinary deductible, and then we also say that there is a limit to this 1 plus r times x, and this limit is equal to, to you. And the very last step, there is this coinsurance factor. That's the alpha that you get over here. Now, one of the claims um, that we're going to make on the next uh, sheet is that we can also write this same yl in one line. And this yl can be written in the following way. You can see it as 1 plus r times x wedge u minus 1 plus r times x which d. So the first thing we want to figure out is, yeah, does that indeed lead to the same kind of, of construction as the one I had on my, on my previous uh, sheet? And if that's true, then this is a, a useful way of thinking. Why is that? Because if I need to calculate, for example, the expected value of these wedge kind of constructions, huh, then I often have them in my, my table with distributions, my table with expressions. That's often um, specified there and so that allows me to actually do some calculations with these type of uh, random variables and avoids me to to go to the um, tedious integral type of, of calculations yeah so if you're solving an exercise if you're working on an exam question it's often interesting to think about yeah can i use this kind of wedge constructions to re-express the variable that i'm working with so if you look at uh, this guy, so the way I, how I would understand is I would say what happens with this construction. So what happens um, if one plus r times x is less than d? And we're going to assume that d is smaller than u because d is the deductible and u is the uh, policy limit. So of course, if the one plus r times x is smaller than u, so what we get then is alpha times 1 plus r times x, 
minus one plus r times x. So that is a value of zero for the y value. And that's indeed what we want. And because remember my first line in the construction of the previous sheet, if the loss after uh, imposing the, or after applying the inflation effect, if the loss stays below the deductible, nothing should be paid, right? So this corresponds, second line, what happens if you have a one plus R times X that is in between the D and the U, yeah? So if I then look at my construction, then I get alpha times, well, one plus R times X is smaller than U. So the first wedge construction will give me the one plus R times X, right? But the second wedge construction, now the one plus R times X is larger than D. So this guy will give me D, right? So I need to subtract D, which is also okay, which is also correct. Huh? That corresponds to the second line, which I had on the previous, previous sheet. And then in the last step, if I look at the one plus R times X larger than or equal to U, if I look at my definition of the YL on top of my sheet, I'll get for the minimum, for the first wedge construction, the one over here, I'll get U. For the second wedge construction, I'll get D. So I'm left with alpha times U minus D, which is also what I, what I need, yeah? So I can work with this particular way of writing down the per loss run variable. And that's a convenient way of writing it because it allows me, as we will see, it allows me to get a good grip on what is the expected value, what is the second moment um, that makes the calculations uh, easier uh, to work with this, with this type of, um, of random variable, yeah? For example, if we look at the expected value, that's something we've been, oops, uh, we've been doing a little bit already. So if I would write down the expected value of YL, well, that's in fact what I've been doing uh, before the break yeah? by doing this expected value of one plus R times X which U. That's what we've been doing before the break. So I can put the one plus R up front and I'm left then with the expected value of X which U divided by one plus R minus expected value of X which D divided by one plus R. So that's what I've been doing on the iPad before, um, before the break. Uh, that's what you should recognize uh, from. If you wanna switch to the per payment random variable, if you look at the per payment random variable, then of course, um, what you need to do, uh, so switch to expected value of YP, that's the expected value of YL divided by the probability that YL is strictly larger than zero. And as we've been discussing, this probability is the probability that one plus R times X is strictly larger than D. So that is equal to FX evaluated in D divided by one plus R. So that's, uh, sorry, it's one minus uh, this probability. Yeah, that's something we recognize uh, from our earlier discussions. So working with this convenient way of expressing the per loss random variable allows me to come up quite quickly with its expected value. And I can also do the, the second moment, as you will see on the sheets, we can also do the second moment of our, of our calculation uh, over there. Okay. So you recognize here my expression for the, um, for the per loss random variable, for the per payment random variable, where I rely on my nice, my elegant wedge notation for the per loss random variable uh, YL, yeah? So this is what we verified together. This is how we can then calculate it expect, its expected value. And you can do the same thing for the um, second moment. Huh? If you look at the expected value of YL squared, there you will be able to come up with an expression like, like this, which I derive on the sheets, starting again from this, um, from this construction that we, that we introduced early on. So I suggest that you look at the derivation of the second moment as a kind of exercise. So it's 
it's quite similar. Huh? It, it uses again this elegant uh, way with the wedges, with the two wedges uh, construction in order to do the necessary um, calculations. I do not expect you to uh, know this by heart. You should rather see this as an exercise. Huh? So make sure that you understand the steps that, um, that, are, that are taking place here, huh? the steps we need, the kind of thinking in this uh, derivation. Because for example, in an exercise, uh, like I said, it's useful if you can use these wedge constructions. If you can recognize, uh, okay, I can write this random variable that I'm interested in. I can write this as uh, um, a, a transformation where I use, where I take the minimum uh, of, of a random variable and, and, and a given value u or t. Uh, so we're gonna do a couple of exercises to, uh, to practice this.